lest I lose my candlestick. I want us to quickly look at what is the word candlestick? How does it apply to you and I? Because many people will not, will not come because they don't even know the importance, the significance of candlestick. Candlestick as is mentioned in the scriptures. I want to, you don't have this one, okay? Um, you just have to move along with me. Job chapter 18 verse 6. The light shall be dark in his tabernacle and his candle shall be put out with him. I, I want you to go to the verse before that. Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out. The light of the wicked shall be put out. Two important things. I want you to notice that I said the light of the wicked shall be put out. Are you saying, Job, that even the wicked had light? I guess so. I guess what? That's what he's saying. Do you agree that the wicked had light? I may put agree. But he said it shall be put out. What is the implication of that in the light of the New Testament? I'm going to show you now. He said the light of the wicked shall be put out and the spark of his fire shall not shine. Are you saying the wicked ought to have fire but it will not shine? What is the meaning of this statement? Two weeks ago, I, I was in Johannesburg to handle a youth conference. It was supposed to be a two-day youth conference. I have so many things that the Lord put in my heart. Some of you will be aware that they just had xenophobia, xenophobic attacks in South Africa and was the humanity in the preacher kicked in. And I said, Lord, I don't think I need to go for this meeting anymore. They are killing people. They are killing foreigners and whatever. And after a few days, he told me that for this cause you are born, that courage must rise with what? Courage must rise with what? That all these years, what you are doing is, you are doing preparation. It is the places where there is trouble that will be sending you to. Ah, huh? says so, you go. And I started looking at, how, what do I do? And I got, and I said, two days is not sufficient to do what I want to do, Friday, Saturday, people are. And he said, let me teach you something. Can you give me the metaphors of the Holy Spirit that you know? And I said, yes, the Holy Spirit is wind. No. Can, we, can we quickly do that together? Holy Spirit, the metaphors that you know. Fire, oil, water, wind, and dove. Clap for yourself. Then he said, the first approach is to remember the fire. He said, there is a fire that I've made you to be. Are they not ministering? And has made these ministers fire. He spoke about John the Baptist. He said there was a time, he, was a, he said he was not a burning fire. He said, but fire must get to a particular stage before it can combust. That's why he said, quench not the Holy Spirit. He said, there are messages you have preached and they never got to the point of combustion. That's why you didn't have enough success. So start building fire to the point that by the time you salah, by the time you hit the people, it will burn, burn off. And I want to tell you, I give you testimony that that was what happened. He said, I want to deal with Kundalini spirit. You know what is called Kundalini spirit? 
I'm going to say a lot of things that are above your head, but they will come, you will grow taller than them. There is a spirit that came from the Eastern world, Asia. It's called the Kundalini spirit. Those who worship Hindu and Buddha and all that, they are the ones that... Let me show you the manifestation of Kundalini spirit. You fall down. Sometimes you laugh. Have you seen them before? Where did you see them? In the churches. In the Pentecostals. Where we throw the Holy Ghost. You want it? And everybody will fall down. Holy Ghost. He said, in all the metaphors, did you see Holy Ghost as a ball? That you can throw, like basketball. Holy Ghost. Do you know what is Holy Ghost? God. And you throw God. You want it? And then you see people manifesting Kundalini spirit. And we call it Holy Ghost. And after several years, the people fall down, roll on the floor, but they were never changed in the inside. He said, son, I'm sending you back to South Africa. He said, challenge them. 20 years, I opened the door for the gospel. All the missionaries in the world went there. He said, in 20 years, has the heart changed? If after 20 years, the spirit of bitterness and violence is still strong. He said it means that everybody must review the gospel they took to South Africa. He said, that is the reason why you are going back. I want to tell you that after four, we are supposed to have two days, and I said, Lord, two days is not enough. So, yeah. Are you not an engineer? I said, yes. So what do you do then? So you start what you call the preheating stage. So I sent a message and I said, the conference is for Friday and Saturday, but Wednesday and Thursday, I want to see all those who are willing, voluntary, to have fellowship with me, Wednesday and Thursday. And so Wednesday and Thursday, we used it to heat up. By Friday, the multitude came. Some came cold. Some came lukewarm. Some came hot. But the fire we had built consumed the cold and they couldn't lower the temperature. And so from the first day, bam! Explosion. By the second day, combustion. Hallelujah. And everybody say, I feel light. Why will you feel light? We burnt out all the burnables. And listen to me. God is getting to that point that without anybody touching you, when the word of God is going on, it will say, and the spirit entered into me. Why he spoke to me? And he set me upon my feet. You can fall down if you want to fall down, but the word that I preach will make you stand instead of falling. Amen. He said, the light of the wicked shall be put and the spark of his fire shall not shine. If it does not shine, it will not get to combustion. So what is this light of the wicked and what is this spark of his fire? Next verse. The light shall be dark in his tabernacle. Oh, the light shall be dark in his tabernacle. Are you saying the wicked has a tabernacle? Remember, it's the wicked. 
Are you saying that every man that is made in the image and likeness of God first and became subjected to that of Adam, everyone is a tabernacle. Every single human being, God has built in you the chamber of worship. The arm robber of the street wants to worship something. The prostitute wants to worship something. Those who just messed up our money and our economy, they want to worship something. Hear me, let me correct you. It is not everybody that has gone to church that has gone to worship Yahweh. But they went to church because they want to worship something. The Bible did not say the wicked is not going to church. But his tabernacle is dark. And his candle shall be put out. So actually his candle is his light. His candle is the spark of his fire. His candle is the light in his tabernacle. What is in the tabernacle? Candlestick that gives fire to the high priest when he comes. So to the wicked, his candlestick is put out. But I want you to notice, the candlestick is put out, is not removed. He can still repent. We are not talking about, this conference is not talking about a situation is warning you about a situation where you cannot even repent. This wicked, the candle is put out, but it's not removed. I will show you when it is removed. Hello? Churches die. What did I say? I said churches die. Write it down. Say churches die. The wicked used to have light. Now, the Bible said, by the mouth of two or more witnesses, every matter shall be established, right? Let's look at Job chapter 21, verses 17 and 18. How oft is a candle of the wicked put out? Ah, oh, oh, oh there's a problem here. Mm. What does how oft imply? Who can help me? It means how often, how repeatedly. If it says how often, that means it was on, it was put out, it was on again, it was put out, it was on again, it is put out. Hear me. The objective of this teaching conference is to ensure that you don't become a victim of the new age theory about hyper grace that tells you you can sin today, go with you. then you sin tomorrow, then you repent, then you sin tomorrow, then you repent, then you sin tomorrow. That is over. Because you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead because God calls you a wicked. How oft is the lamp of the wicked put out? Um, this is New King James. Give me Old King James. I'm an old school man. Give me Old King James. How oft is the candle of the wicked put out? Let's go to the book of Job 29. Why am I using Job? How many of you know that Job was not a Jew? Yeah, you know, I've seen people fight over that. Job was not a Jew. Go and check the book of Job. You will see him. Let me tell you, every Jew 
we refer to our father Abraham. Our fathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Job was not a Jew. Job chapter 29, verses 1 to 5. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, uh, Yes. Oh, that I were as in months past, mm -hmm. as in the days when God preserved me. I hope we are all familiar with this. Job was in a situation where he was not even sure whether God was with him or not. So he was referring to a time in the past. Okay, continue. When his candle shined upon my head. Whoa, whoa. When his candle shined. That means there is a consciousness, there is a feeling in him that the candle was no longer shining. Okay, continue. And when by his light I walked through darkness. Maya Bosa. That means when the candle is on, I can walk through darkness. Continue. As I was in the days of my youth, when the secrets of God was upon my tabernacle. I want you to notice my tabernacle. He's not talking about buildings. He's talking about himself. The light is important to the tabernacle. Without that light, the tabernacle is dark. No revelation. No relationship with him. Continue. When the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were about me. When the Almighty was yet with me. We all know that Job was not totally correct, but that was what he was feeling. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now let's look at David himself. Psalm 18 verse 28. For thou wilt light my candle. For thou wilt light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Wow. Kimasinda. That means being able to see in darkness has to do with having your candle alight. Being able to be guided in situations that challenge you has to do with your candle. Without your candle, a light, you are in delusion. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 20. Let's now see what is the definition of the candle. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27 and 28. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. So if your candle is off your spirit is dead is it bible that we are reading praise god the spirit of the man is the candle of the lord searching all the inward parts of the valley hear me if you cannot often do self search inside you are likely to be dead the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. That's your inner man. The two brothers going to Emmaus, they were complaining. Look at what is happening. Look at this. And the Bible said the Lord joined them. And they did not know he was in. And they ministered to them. And when they got to his house, when they got to their house, they sat down to eat. And when they broke the bread, the Bible said their eyes were open. And they said, did our heart not burn within us while he yet spake with us? Their candle was lit. Until that point, they were in darkness. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 24, 20. For there shall be no reward to the evil man the candle of the wicked shall be put out. Hmm? Remember he said the candle of the wicked shall. That means the wicked initially had the candle. And he had light. Can we prove it? Let's go to John chapter 1. I want to announce to you. Look at me. Please. Do not go to hell. What did I say? Please 
do not go to hell. If you go to hell, you will go there and become a squatter. And you know what it means to be a squatter? Some of you had stayed in you know, my first year in the university, I was a squatter. I will hall. The room was supposed to have three people. We were seven. In the night, I would set up my camp bed. And because I was a squatter, I had no rights in the room. All my things were squashed up in the corner. In fact, nowadays, if you are a squatter, you become the slave of the real owner of the room. I think now in the universities, also, you even pay. In our days, you didn't pay, but the only thing is that sometimes you skip your meals for him. You give him your meal ticket. I don't think they, they, they don't use meal tickets again. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you no, know, some people ensure that the education had gone down. In those days, you used to give your meal. You can give somebody else your meal ticket. Okay. You will be a squatter. You know why you are a squatter? Because your name is not in the accommodation list. Can I say this? Every human being created in the image and likeness of God, whether you became the image of the second Adam, of the first Adam or not, your name is not in hell. What did I say? In the manifest list of those in hell, your name is not there. Hell was not designed to take human beings. I'm sure some people are, uh, this pastor talks, he has come again. The Bible said, would anybody that sin will go to hell? Didn't the Bible say so? Why is he now saying? I will repeat it again. So that every demon, every angel we hear, there is no name of every, ch any child of God, whether born again or not born again in hell. But every human being, your name is in heaven. Mm. I said, no, 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 no. Are you now saying that uh, Amrobas' names are in heaven? Yes! I'm upturning your theology now. No name is written after you get born again in the book of life. Names can only be deleted. You know, we used to believe that the day you get born again, your name is written in the book of life. It's not in the Bible. As you are born, your name is in the book of life because you have life. And because you have life, you have light. And because you have light, there's a candle in you. Let's read John chapter 1. Can you pick it from verse 3? Verse 3. Yes. All things were made by him. Yes. And without him was not anything made that was made. Yes. In him was life. In him was and the life was light of men. And the light of men. Continue. And the light shineth in darkness. And light shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it. Yes. Continue. There was a man mm -hmm. sent from God yes. whose name was John. Yes. The same came for a witness mm -hmm. to bear witness of the light mm -hmm. that all men through him might believe. Yes. It was not that light yes. but was sent to bear witness of, th of that light. Yes. That was a true light which lighted every man that cometh into Ooh, the world. Every man that comes to the world there is a light in them. And if that light is in them, their name is in the book of life. Provision has been made for you to go to heaven. But you have a choice. Do you notice that hell itself will come for judgment? And the Bible said before it can come to judgment, it will first give up everything that is inside him and then come for judgment. Why is hell going to come for judgment? Since God created hell to punish the disobedient, why is hell coming to judgment? Why? Can somebody help me? 
Because it opened his mouth beyond measure. The measure of his mouth is to take Satan and demons. But he opened it, he cooperated with Satan. And opened it to take human beings. God said, I'll pick you. My own. The Bible said, what is man? For him to be mindful of him. He said, he has crowned him with glory and honor. And he has made him to have dominion over all things, including hell. But hell cooperated with demons and enlarge this mouth for those who are made in the image and likeness of God. Hell is going to answer for that. Just as any man of God who has been given any gift and he misused the gift will answer to God. So, please, don't go to hell. You have a choice. Let me stop on that issue of candlestick. And let us go to Revelation chapter 2 verse 5. The theme of the conference. Revelation 2 verse 5. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen. And repent. Wow. That means sometimes you fall. But don't let the devil trick you and tell you that just stay in that falling state. No. Mm -mm. Remember, you must be able to locate where you fell. Because if you don't know, you have a problem. He said, remember from where you, where you fell and repent. And do thy first work. Pastor Andy treated thy first work yesterday. Our origin now commission. Who knows the most, the fastest growing religion in the world now? Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. Do you know why? Because thou has abandoned thy first works. You think guns can destroy Islam? An ideology? No. It takes a powerful ideology to destroy another ideology. Because behind every ideology is a spirit. Guns can kill spirit. Remember, from where thou hast fallen, repent and do thy first works, or else I will come quickly. And will not put out your candlestick. I will remove it. Out of its place, except you repent. This is the message to which church? Ephesus. By your time you get to Sardius, Church number five. He said you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. Now what I want to share with you this morning. Since I got born again, that part of the scripture had always bothered me. I couldn't get a full understanding. Judges chapter 17, 18, 19, and 20. Judges 17, 18, 19, and 20. Those were weird stories. Very weird stories. I remember, remember the story of the man, a, a Levi priest who had a concubine. He had the concubine, went to the concubine, and they, they raped the concubine. They came back and cut the pop right to 12 pieces and sent it to 12 tribes. He's getting a royal potion. No, I don't know how to say it. it was getting really, really weird. Then all the Jew, all the Israelites decided to go and fight their brother Benjamin. And when it gets more confusing, they went to the Lord. And pray, should we fight Benjamin? He said, go. They, 
11 tribes went to fight only one Benjamin and Benjamin and God said go ha ah. Three thousands, they came back and cried and said, God, okay, should we fight our brother? This time around, they put our brother. God said, go. They went again. Ah. Then the third time they came, he said, Lord. At that time, they were actually expecting God to say, don't bother to go again. Because they had lost thousands. And they now said, God, should we go? And God said, go this time. I'll give you victory. What happened? Why did they lose thousands the first time, second time, and the third time? They now went. Something happened. They can't do it. They had strategy. And they totally destroyed Benjamin. But Benjamin, only few remained. <clears throat> Is that no word? So I told God, I said, this part of the Bible, I don't understand. Now, when God gives up, when there is no distinct voice in a nation, let's look, at, let's look at Nigeria. Let's look at the recent election. In the church, who was the distinct voice? Who? There was cacophony of voices. Some say, Jonathan, go. Some say, change, change, change. They have all kinds of things. Some gathered and lay hands on Jonathan. Some gathered and lay hands on Professor Oshimbajo. Some, everybody, all kinds of prophecies. Sir, where is the lion of the tribe of Judah that sees in the darkest hour? And the Bible said there was a time in Israel when there was no king, when everybody did what was right in their own For this corner, he did there. For that corner, on our street in Egypt, how many churches do we have on that street? Everywhere churches. Listen, during that time of election, from it was very unusual. Somehow God, maybe because of this message, God allowed me, unusually I had time. I became active on Facebook from the last week of December to the final weeks of the election. And I saw what Christians were writing on Facebook. I saw Christians who will never go out on Saturday or any day to give out tracts. I saw them wake up in the morning and articulating all the policies of PDP. And some articulated the policies of APC. Some got to a point that if you speak against their party, they were ready to curse you. In fact, if you were beside them, they will punch you. I saw it and I said, one, one guy said, I am ready to drop my Christianity for Buari. Christian, I have it. And I said, Lord, who are the pastors of these guys? And God said, what about you? There were some members of my church that embarrassed me. On Facebook, you know why? No distinct voice. In the nation. We are in the book of Judges. When subtle deception. 
move into gradual descent into delusion. I want to teach you something. God does things in threes. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Inner court, outer court, inner court, holies of holies. The spirit, the word, and the water. Spirit, soul, and body. You, are, you get that? Mm. Can I tell you something? Satan has his own counterfeit. The thief cometh but to steal, kill, destroy. So, when there is some deception, it gradually descends into delusion. Let's look at how degeneracy of the times occurred. Do you know a pastor who was charging members of the church some money to check if their name is in the book of life? Then there's another pastor. I don't know whether you saw this. He started, he said, I'm going to kill all the people, all the demons. I go into the air. So they carry him on a chair. Four members of the church got to carry him on a chair. And it was, I am raining in the atmosphere. I bind the devil. Then they were carrying, these guys were sweating. And it was, they were carrying him on a chair. In the day, today, I kill all the witches against you. And they were carrying him on a chair in the Sunday service. Now we have Pastors who impregnate 20 members of the church and God told them to do so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are several Holy Ghosts now. You have to know which one you, you have. Many of you remember, I used to ask, how many Holy Ghosts exist? You know, I remember, remember when I used to ask that question. Uh -huh. We have come there now. There are many Holy Ghosts that talk to people. Who, one of my friends said there is a difference between a preacher and a man of God. My friend. It's my friend. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't you know we are in Georges? Atonic bomb church of the Holy Ghost. Guided missile. Church of the Pentecostal. For as much then as Christ had suffered for us in the flesh, mm -hmm. arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for that had suffered in the flesh, had ceased from sin, that you no longer should leave the rest of his time in the flesh mm -hmm. to the lust of men, mm -hmm. but to the will of God. Mm -hmm. For the time past mm -hmm. of our life mm -hmm. may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles mm. when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that they run not with them to the same excess of riots, mm. speaking evil of you. Mm -hmm. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? Mm -hmm. Okay, go to 17 and 18 now. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Hey, for the time has come. Judgment must begin from the house of God. Some people like to say, Christians will never be judged. Yes and no. I say yes and no. Christians will never be judged. I think you should drop the word never. I think it's better to say Christian will not be judged. But don't use the word never because Christians will be judged. In fact, it's good that Christians are judged. And let the judgment start now to help us. Amen. Because Christians will be judged. Amen. But true Christians will not be judged at the time when unbelievers are judged. Amen. Finish it to verse 19. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Yes. And if it 
first begin at us. Yes. What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? What shall the end be for them that obey not the gospel of God? First Timothy chapter 4, let's just read a few verses there. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, yes. some shall depart from the faith, mm -hmm. giving heed to seducing spirits. Giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. Doctrines of devils. Hold on. These people that are departing, are they Christians? Hello, please. Come. Are they Christians? You cannot depart from something that you are never in. And they said they are departing from the faith. No, they are not departing from faith. They are departing from the faith. Definite article. Giving heed to seducing spirit. Now you can see the word seducing is present and continuous. Hear me. Check your Bible. Anytime in the Bible you see doctrine pluralized is of the devil. If it is God, it will be doctrine. If it's of the devil, it will be doctrines. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Let me give you an idea of what is called speaking lies in hypocrisy. I'm sure you are not aware of that. No. You know, do you know that we like, especially we Pentecostals, we are very selective in our revelation. When the pastor sees that it, it will be to his own advantage, he quotes from the Old Testament copiously. But when he sees that it will be to his disadvantage, say, so we are not in the Old Testament. We are now in the New. It is, we are in the Old Testament when he calls, bring ye the tithes. Oh God, we smite you dead. You didn't know that we are in the Old Testament. How many people know I've heard about redeeming of firstborn now? Redemption of firstborn. All the firstborn, you must come and you redeem them with money. I, I, am, I, am I lying? It's there. But it's in the Old Testament. You, you redeem. I thought Jesus redeemed us. But you redeem firstborn with money. Mm -hmm. That's not too bad. Now, how many people know that in some churches now, your first salary of the year must go to the pastor? Because that is the first fruit. But in the whole testament, the Bible said, the priest has no inheritance. You can't follow that. That's Old Testament. 